this video will be going through recurrence relation in relation to how to do counting with them so what is a recurrence relation a recurrence relation is a re equation that relates the nth term to its predecessor so let's take an example a n can equal to a n minus 1 plus 3 or a n can equal to 2 to the power n plus 7 a n minus 1 as long as there is a predecessor term it is considered a recurrence relation for it to be well defined we of course need to define the initial condition because if you think about it if you were to backtrack backtrack all these predecessor term so this is like 1 over a n minus 1 it will be 1 over 1 over a n minus 2 so you just flip so it's a n equals to a n minus 2 so it needs to go to a point where it reaches like a0 and a0 is your initial condition if you have other terms like other predecessor a1 equals to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 then you need two initial conditions because at one point a n minus 2 reaches 0 but a n minus 1 will be 1 and so you need two of these to get a n a 2 so you need to define the initial condition and we have already seen an example of a recurrence relation that is the sterling number of the second kind where s r n equals to s r minus 1 comma n minus 1 plus n times s r minus 1 comma n and we define different initial conditions to fulfill our requirements. Let's take a look at other type of recurrence relation, how they are applied to counting. One example will be dearrangements actually. Dearrangement is actually counting the number of ways that you can permute a sequence of numbers from 1 to n, such that none of the integers reach back their original position as 1. So it means that ai cannot equal to i for every i. What does it mean? Well, it means that when you list out the integers from 1 to n, 1 will obviously start from 1. But now, 1 cannot be a 1. So 1 has to be in some other place. So someone else has to take the position 1, and there's n minus 1 of it. So let's say i takes the position 1. Then... There's two cases. Either one takes i position or one doesn't. If one doesn't take i position, then you can treat this one as the new i and means that there is a dearrangement of the remaining n minus one terms. And that's why it's d n minus one. But if i takes over one takes over the i position, they are basically interchanging these two. And the remaining n minus two terms will be dearranged. So it's d n minus two. And so the total number of ways is dn minus 1 plus dn minus 2. This whole term times n minus 1. And the reason for this n minus 1 is because you have to choose the number of i's that cannot equal to 1. And so there's n minus 1 terms. Our initial is if there's only one number, then there's no ways to dearrange them because there's only one slot and there's one number. But if there's two, then you can interchange the two. So it's one. For example, one, two can... The supposed arrangement of 1, 2 is now changed to 2, 1, and that's the only way. So with these two initial conditions, you are able to do recursively solve for other types of Ds. So and while it's hard to find a closed form formula, we can enable the help of computers to help us, and I've provided a code for you to run. So with what we have already said, dn is just if n is 1 then it's 0 if n is 2 is 1 so these are the initial conditions else it will return n minus 1 times dn minus 1 plus dn minus 2 and you can run it and see that d3 is 2 and if you were to list out three digits d range then it will be two ways because instead of 1 2 3 you must get either 3 1 2 or 2 3 one and those are the only two possible ways now let's take a look at a case where you can find the closed form and that is if it's specialized to a linear homogeneous recurrence relation 
So what is a linear homogeneous recurrence relation? It, linear means that the terms are of power 1 and there is no cross terms. Half order just means that there are previous terms. So in our case of B arrangement, this is not linear because the coefficient of the predecessors is not a constant. So to make it linear, it has to be a constant. And it, it is homogeneous means that the terms are all of the predecessor terms. So in this case, it is somewhat homogeneous, but because the coefficient is not linear, it doesn't even make sense to talk about a linear co homogeneous recurrence relation in that case. So an example of a linear homogeneous recurrence relation is the form of this. A n equals to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 where a 0 is 1 and a 1 is 2. This actually models the following example below, which is the number of binary sequences such that there is no consecutive 0. Because if for length 0, there's obviously no ways. So there's like one, there's like a vacationally true statement, so it's one way. So it's like length 0 will have no co consecutive 0, so it's 1. If you have a length 1 sequence, then there's two ways to get no zeros, which is either you put 0 or 1, then there's no consecutive 0 still. And so if you consider an arbitrary length length, then if you start with 1, then there's a n minus 1. But if you start with 1, if you start with 0 then, then the next term must be 1. And so the next one is a n minus 2. So you add them up, that's how you get the recurrence relation. So you can see how counting problems can be reduced to creating the recurrence relation to help us compute them easier through a computer. But for this case, a linear homogeneous recurrence relation we can actually solve it and there's one step-by-step -step approach to solving it and that is the use of a characteristic polynomial so the first step of doing it is to shift all the terms to one side so we have shifted it a n minus a n minus 1 minus a n minus 2 then we can rewrite this induces a characteristic polynomial where your largest power term which is the a n becomes the highest power x at 2 squared then it's minus x minus 1 so your lowest power is this constant one and this is the called the characteristic polynomial you can study more about characteristic polynomial in linear algebra but we shall not go into the proof of that instead we'll use it to help us solve for linear homogeneous recurrence relation so we can solve for this characteristic polynomial and it gives us two roots then the gen the solution to this linear homogeneous recurrence relation will just be a constant times the root to power n plus another constant times the other root to power n and so when we solve for this constant we'll get the following and the way to solve it and the reason why we have two constants is because we need two co there's two predecessor terms and also this means that we need two initial conditions so that we can solve for two of these constants and so a n will just result in this formulation well if you are unsure whether this is a true formulation we can actually run the code version so as we have did for the arrangement, we can set our initial conditions for a n 0 and 1 to return 1 and 2 respectively and return a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 we can see how we have already solved for the characteristic polynomial to get the roots and afterwards this leads us to the solution to the recurrence relation and we can type this solution out in a very lengthy way which we will call b n now a 2 is 3 and if we want b 0 first it is 1 that coincides with our initial condition where a 0 is 1 and we run b2 it will produce 3 but because of the floating point errors it will return a non-integer but a decimal solution that is close to the actual solution of 3 if you list them out 
and we can show that A5 which is 13 is the same as B5 which is also 13 and hence we have shown that we this solution is indeed correct for 2 5 and 0 but because we have actually solved it algebraically it actually proves that it is the solution to the linear homogeneous recurrence relation hence for linear homogeneous recurrence relation you are able to solve for the closed form formula but sometimes for like in the case of gear arrangement it is not so simple to solve for a closed form but if you simplify it you are able to use a computer to run your code now there are certain things that you need to take note of is that in this example now if we use this if we try to solve for this linear recurrence relation there will be a repeated root means a root with a multiplicity more than one and in that case the general solution is no longer a constant times your root to our n instead it has to be a plus b n times the the root that is repeated and so in general if you have multiple if you are repeated how many times you have to multiply by a polynomial of degree of your multiplicity minus one and you can just take a look at more examples online to get a feeling of it but the general steps of solving it is always the same where you first create the current you shift all the terms to one side you find the characteristic polynomial you solve for the roots and whether there is repeated roots or not you can create a general solution for it so this is it for recurrence relation modeling counting problems and we will have seen how we have used specific cases such as the linear homogeneous recurrence relation to formulate closed form formulas I've hoped you have enjoyed the video and have come to the end. Thank you for listening and feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.